Good day, Fred friends. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Vic, and uh, I've got a little announcement to make. And um, this being that um, repairing guitars and being a guitar technician is now my full-time job. Before it was just uh, it was a hobby, really, uh, but now it is my full-time job. And from this week, I'm now classed as self-employed. So uh, actually, the first job of that era. And it's a guitar. I've already stripped the guitar. Now this guitar belongs to. A guy I've known for quite a while. He's a guitar tutor. He's a great guy. I've um, I've known him for a couple of years, and uh, this is his one of the guitars he uses in schools to teach kids how to play. And he's got a few problems. The electrics have stopped working. Uh, the frets need some attention. And I've already this is already in bits. It's a nice guitar. It's an old one. It's an old Tanglewood. It could be a Korean-made Tanglewood. I don't know what model it is. I've got absolutely no idea. It certainly is made in Korea. As it says there, made in Korea. Groover tuners, very nice guitar, big old round shape, big thick guitar there. There's some oldie style electrics there. Um, you'll see that the input jack or the end pin jack is hanging out because I've taken it out because a wire is snapped in there, which makes things a lot, a lot easier. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fix the wire in first, make sure everything's working. We get a battery in there, test everything, and uh, once that's done, we can move on to getting the frets levelled, recrowned, and polished. It does need a complete fret level. Uh, we already know this, we knew this anyway. Um, so, something I'm going to have to do. So, like I say, I'm going to fix this uh, M pin jack, just one wire off there, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to desolder everything. I'm going to tidy everything up, get it all nice and neat in there, and we're going to get that back in, and then we're going to, like I say, we're going to move on to the frets. Okay, that's interesting. So, back soon. Okay, so you're probably not going to see a great deal from where you are and the position I've got the camera in, but at least you can see what I'm doing. And what we're going to do is I'm going to desolder all three of these wires and I'm going to tidy this clamp up because obviously what's happened here is this has come off the wire snapped off because it's got nothing on it. I'm going to get everything all tightened up inside here. So we're going to remove um, the old wires. That's about as close as I want to go. And I'm hoping I've got the solder iron hot enough. I'm going to need something under there, aren't I? Fortunately, I have a piece of card sat right there. So we're just going to hopefully melt the solder. I've got the solder iron at 320 degrees, which is proving to be well enough. That was for that part anyway, and there you go. That's good. So what I'm going to do is, I'll clean the water. Now I've got that much wire to work with at the moment. I can force some through by pouring it through this little gubbins here. I think I've got enough there to work with, to be honest with you. I need to go and get a bit more through if I want. I can get plenty to work with there. I've got that much now. So I can I'm going to tidy all this up. What we're going to do first is we're going to clean this up. And I can take a plier. We're going to see if we just open up, which we can quite easily. Open that up. This lug here, which the earth one goes on, we're going to cut off. Doesn't need to be there. As long as it's earthed somewhere, it's fine. I may. Leave it there just to trap some wire in there. Can you see where you are? No, not me. Can you see a bit? Don't even need that on there. But it's a little bit of a mess. So let me just try and tidy that up, twist it right and right. Well, what we don't want to do is we don't want to snap that. So that's pretty good. This piece of lug here. I'm going to try and snap off. You know what? Even better, I will cut it off as that. Doesn't need to be there. There you go, that's out of the way. That's good. Right, okay, so we're going to clean off the solder. I do have a decent pump somewhere. I should have my helping hands out as well. I 
because there's a lot of solder on there. Solder. Come to 360 degrees. Let's see if we'll just get this off of here. Well, there you go. Beautiful. That's how it done. Okay, I've still got a bit in there. Try to keep you guys in the loop so you can see what's happening. That's good. So I've got one up totally clear. That's great. So we've desoldered the whole gubbins there. Got a little bit of solder there, that's actually okay. So now what we need to do is refer to a little well I didn't make a map. I took a picture. Just so we know where the wires need to go. And uh, there you go, got a little picture on there. So I know where each wire is going to need to go. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go off camera, I'm going to start stripping these wires. See where I need them. The black one is going to go down here on earth somewhere. I believe the white one goes there, the red one goes there. So we're going to need to just trim these wires just a little bit. So I'm going to do that, get them all nice and neat, we'll come back, get it soldered up, then we can move on to the next part of the job. So we're everything all soldered back up neatly, we can push the lugs back in. Uh, everything's separated, we've got a nice lock and a clamp on there, we can put everything back in the guitar. So I'm going to remove the screw, stick them back in, that should work absolutely fine now. So I'm going to move on to the next part of the process, which is rewiring everything in the body of the guitar, and then we'll go and have a look at the frets. With the electrics now done, we are going to work on the frets. So what we're going to do is we're going to knock off the nut, and I'll take a notch straight edge, which basically we use We'll check in the level of the guitar neck or the level of the frets, like so. And all I'm going to do is use the end and we're just going to tap off. I already know this nut is not super tight, so we're just going to tap it off. There you go, straight off, no problem. A little bit more glue there than you'd normally use, but that's okay. And that's off. So, what we're going to do now is we are going to set the neck straight. And I've not done it yet, and I normally do that before. I'm going to have a look in the right Allen key slot there, it should be a 4mm. There's a formula which is brilliant and we'll just go into okay okay that's pretty close to perfectly straight that was a little bit of relief this end so if we just go a about an eighth turn there should be enough and this should give us a straight neck and that looks pretty straight to me feels good so let's have a look oh yes Yes, we're liking that. There's a little bit of backbone in there, so we need to come back probably a sixteenth of a turn again. It's very rare to get a perfectly level neck, so it kind of undulates up and down just a little across the whole length, tiny, tiny fractions. And we, what we do is we take a we take an average of what we think looks best, and this, my friends, looks pretty pretty good yep and I'm happy with that I'm happy that that is level what we're going to do is we're going to level the frets all of them and we're going to do it with a leveling beam what I'm going to do first is I'm going to check the frets because it's not something that I've done uh, I do have a fret locker somewhere here is the fret locker bear with me a second while I close this workshop door right that's good so we're just going to go across the frets these frets it's not so much that these frets are unlevel that we need dressing it's that they have quite a lot of wear down this end, but anyway, we're going to check. Quite 
quite flat across the top. So we could have, oh wait, there's one. It's a redress to go have more than anything else. I would have thought there's another one. In not too distant future, this may be worth, there's another. Maybe worth refretting this guitar. These frets, it's had a lot of play. There's another one, that's four already. I know this guitar is old and it's had a lot of play. Um, so the frets over the years have flattened out. There you go, that's five, six. That one is so high, seven. This is super high, it's like half a mil. So we do need a fret level anyway. What a great job both of them for my first as a full time guitar tech. Yeah, so I think we have about nine frets here. This one is mega high. I, mean, I can visibly see that that's a third of a millimetre high there, this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to skim across the whole lot. The frets are flat anyway. Um, we are going to flatten them even more. What we need to do is recrown them. We've just got enough material left to rebuild that crown. So full job on this. Yeah, it's going to take a few hours. So uh, rather than prattle on about it, I'm going to mark the frets that need levelling, get the neck taped up. Once that's done, I'll turn the camera back on and I will show you how I go about levelling the frets. So back briefly just to show what frets I had. I've marked them off. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine frets. One, two, three, four, five. Six, super high. Seven, eight, nine. Nine high frets. What I'm going to do with these before I tape it up is because one is so high, I'm going to do with the beam. I'm actually going to attack it with file. And I'm going to go with two files. And I do actually have a leveling file, which is this one. It's a very coarse cut and it is quite, it, does, it doesn't take any prisoners this one, but it removes a lot of material. And because this fret is so high, it's what I'm going to use just on this one fret until we bring it down to the level of the others. And that removes quite a bit of material. And let's go and check. But not enough, nowhere near enough. That's we've got to be really, really brutal with this one. There's quite a bit of material from there already. Still very, very high. So I'm going to use my fine cut number four Swiss file made by Valor, but I'm going to. This needs a lot of material removing this fret. We're not taking any prisoners with this one. It's really, really high. Still really high. And the good thing about this file, is you can get the name on there for you. You might see it. Swiss made. It says here. Made by Valorb. There, so there's another name on there. Uh, Glarden. Glarden, there's a picture of a fish, and there's Valorb. Hopefully, you can see. I'm not going to zoom in because uh, we we'll lose focus. But anyway, I have a perfectly flat side this side, so that's great again for just going and removing quite a bit of material in one go. Once we start losing the resistance, we know we're getting close to it being level because it's touching the other frets. But there's a lot of material on the floor, it's still high. But we are getting there. That's good. Wow. I'm surprised this guitar's ever played well.
Still fine. Wow. Shows how hard these frets are. Because I removed quite a bit of material from this one fret and I still need to remove more. I know we're getting there now because once your resistance becomes less and less and less you start gliding across it means you're level with the other frets and it's skimming across all of those as well. That is a lot of material removed from that but if that's saying what's needed that's what's needed, I'll be getting there now, we're nearly there. The close, it's just where the frets meet the body, by the way, or where the neck heel is, or the neck joint is. Which makes it just a little bit more awkward to file. But anyway, let's have a look. That's still fine. Very close now to where we need to be. That is a lot, lot better. There you go. Little rattle there. Okay, very good. So we're very, very close, which is what we want. See, if I'd have been doing this with a leveling beam, it would have taken me about three or four strips of sandpaper and a lot longer. And I think that one fret, that's just one fret, but I think that's just about there now. And there you go, we're on level with that one. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take my marker pen again. I'm going to remark the ones I had marked because I've just rubbed all the pen off. That's kind of there. Okay, it's a little bit high in the middle, but we are very close. These ones are already marked, so what we're going to do with these ones already marked, so these next ones will be a lot, lot easier. Um, so let's go with these two. Flat side of the file. Again. Once we stop getting resistance, we know we've removed enough material. We do it. Very good. 
Bear with me a second. Notice the guitar is pulling that way now because I've turned the file around and it'll pull in the way that the cut is digging in. If I turn the file around again this way, it did knock the guitar that way again. But I think that is the frets now all levelled. It more or less ought to be. And that is it. I'm just going to check this one again because it was so high. So we now have the frets level. So what we're going to do is now is I'm going to tape up the whole fingerboard. I'm going to come back with a sanding beam or a leveling beam. Basically a piece of box section steel, two by one inch. Uh, both edges, top and bottom, milled perfectly flat. And I've 240 grit affixed to that side, 400 grit affixed to this side. Because I've already leveled the frets, when I've got this all taped up, I'm going to come across, we're just going to go across with 400 grit, just to smooth off all of the frets. And we're also going to then check it with a radius gauge, make sure the radius has been kept intact. And once that's done, we can move on to recrowning these frets. By recrowning, what I mean is these frets are all flat anyway. So what we need to do is we need to get that crown back in, going across this way. It takes quite a while, so I'm going to crack on rather than talk. Uh, but I want to get that done today because the guy is coming for the guitar in the morning. So um, I'll get it taped up, get these frets all levelled and we'll crack on, get them crowned. With the neck now all taped up, we can um, level all of the frets together. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one pass in the 240 grit just to make sure we have got them all level across the length of the neck. And if we have got them all level, we should be fresh and all turn silver pretty quickly. As I, as I thought, we still need a bit of work at this end, which is a good thing because we are doing the whole length of the neck. What it's doing is it's removing all these divots from this end as well. But 
one fret down here saying there's one particularly high one in this area. Yeah, especially on this edge here. I'm just going to concentrate this area until we start removing all of the glue. I think we're pretty much there. So let's see. Okay, that is all of the pen removed. All the frets have now been leveled. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go across it again. I'm just going to check, especially this one. No, it's bored right, it's fantastic. So this is saying that the frets are now level. I'm feeling very pleased so far. Still a tiny bit higher that one I thought it was. That's why I made that blue spot behind it, you see. But now I'm very, very pleased. Divot there, but we're going to be okay with that. So, again, one more time, cover the frets. We're now going to finish off a 400 grit, and this should come off in just a few, few strokes. This is going to give Derek a good few more years out of his guitar. I think it's he's had it a long time 20 something years, 30 something years. And if, if these are the original frets, you should get another five years out of this. That really is not bad going at all, is it? You notice I've got the sand hole covered, just so I don't get any filings in there, or any crap in there we don't want. But there you go. So now, I'll just clean this before I uh, use it. I can just give it a brush, get the old rubbish off there. It's in there from the last time I used it. Good thing about a leveling beam is well, you can use it for three or four different jobs. It doesn't have to be super rough. As long as there's a bit of roughness on there, it will remove material. So, we should be able to remove this now pretty quickly. Just a few strokes, not too many strokes. We're going to follow the radius. When we get to the edges, we're not going to lean out. We're going to actually follow the radius. So we're going to go all the way across. So we're always going to have it horizontal to the radius. Get the meaning. So let's have a look, see where we are. it'd be better if I could have this fixed down. Not, the reason it's not fixed down is because I've got this on two. I've got a neck holder there and another one underneath. And really I should have those, have those clamped down to the table. But a little bit, but one fret here showing a bit of blue. So I'm just going to check that level. Because this fret has been the problem on fret 14. And fret 14 is still high. And that is exactly why... That's why that blue's remaining there because this fret is still high. Wow. I removed a lot of height from that fret. That's it. So now this pet blue should all be removed, and then you go, it's going. Nice gentle strokes now, just to bring everything nice and neat. Get rid of all those grooves at the head stop end. And that should be the frets now, all level. Start with this fret first because this is one that's been the problem all the time. Still a little bit hard that spot.
Oh, a lot of material removed that one. And we're there. We are there. So the fun part, I'm going to do the crowning and the polishing, which is a bit of a pain because it's what takes the time, especially the polishing. Crowning is not so bad, but it's what we do. If all things go well, this will be my full time occupation from now until I stop working. Press all level. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take a black pen. Done with pretty colours today. If we've got a black one, there's a black one. And I'll go to recrown the frets. And I'm not gonna recrown them like I'd normally recrown them, I'm just gonna put because there's not a lot of height left on these frets, but I'm just gonna get a nice gentle crown just over the top. Because these having flatter frets isn't too bad anyway, but it only but not wide frets. I dare say I could just go over here with a profiling file. A couple of them are going to need some work. I'm pretty much tempted to stick this in the vise over there and stop this thing wobbling. I don't want it wobbling about. Uh, so the frets are ready to be found. Let's just see where we are. I've got on tape. I always save on tape and just stick it on the table because I can always use it again later, like here for instance, just to cover the body where I'm going to be filing the frets. Just so if I stick with a file, it's not going to damage anything. Prevention more than anything else. We just cover some areas, just in tape like so. Because I'm going to be filing over these areas and this area, so we just need to make sure it's covered. Because it's very rare I slip with a file anyway, but it's been known, it's something we just do. I picked this trick up from um, Nigel Roberts. It was leicestershalufia.co.uk out there in Thringston, great guy. Uh, picked up some great tips off him over the years. He's been also given me tools over the years. Great, great guy. Great, great guy to spend time with. He's not been well, but I think he's on the mend now. But a great guy to spend time with. He's got so much knowledge and he's so happy to share his Luthier knowledge with you. I've always enjoyed spending time with him. Not as frequently as I used to. But what a great guy, and he gave me one of my diamond crowning files actually, and one I still use today. And I'm sure you'll see that one later. But there you go. And now this all taped up, so for when I'm crowning these frets, I'm not going to do it yet, I'm going to get it all up in the vise. But I will show you one. So what I'm going to do is I'll stop the camera, I'm going to move it, and I'll show you one fret. So without really explaining too much, I'm going to show what I'm going to do. Again. And where these frets are now flat across the top, we are going to rebuild that crown in them. There's a couple of ways I could do it. My favourite way is using my three cornered file, this one. And what I'm going to do is when I work at the far side, I roll the file toward the camera and it starts building that arc on the far side. And when I work on the near side, the closest to the camera, as I file, I roll it away from the camera. And it's going to build up the crown. So, make sure I know this guitar is going to move a little bit, so it's not perfect, but it only cuts in the forward motion, by the way. But we can still do it both ways. And now I'm going to start slightly angling the file toward the camera. And there you go. And we'll do the same this side. And we're slightly roll the file away from the camera and 
And what I'm looking for is a nice thin line right down the centre of the fret, which I now have. A thin line is about third of, to a quarter to a point, point three point four of a millimetre. I'd like to go for around about 0.35 of a millimetre or a third of a millimetre. And that's going to be a point of contact between the string and the top of the fret. And instead of it being flat now, which will cause buzz, we now have a beautiful crown on there. Once that is done, I'll take my crowning file, which has got a crown built in. And just to remove any burrs and to even everything out, finish off like so. And we now have a beautifully crowned fret. Uh, now you see why I've taped up this part of the guitar because when I come to doing the ones at this end I'm probably going to dig in to the body and I don't want to be digging into the body so just in case I do slip blah, 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 blah. I've got, I'm going to show one more at this end it doesn't take a lot of work and I'm angling the file in towards the camera come to the other side with that again always wipe file profile and file there you go that one done once I've done a couple I check that the level is still there so these frets are now going to be like brand new we've got no divots in them no dings no scr no scratches in them. well some scratches possibly not. no dings in there anymore they're like new frets I have 20 odd more to do so I'm going to crack them with that get those done and um, I can move on to the polishing. So I'm just about tidying up the polishing and this guitar, because it hasn't had a great deal of fretwork, rather than use paper, I've used polishing rubbers this time. And these are from Crimson Guitars and I don't, I'm not sure if I like them or not yet, but these are from Crimson Guitars and I have four, we have a coarse one, medium, fine and super fine. And I've been across some polishing frets and they've come up really rather nice. So. I'm just now finishing off with steel wool. I've got these three left to do. Uh, one second. So you see I've been using a different method of clamping the guitar neck as well to the vise. So I'm having it in the vise, I clamp my guitar neck holder in the vise and I hold the guitar where it needs to be with rubber bands. And that's going nowhere. It's fantastic. Just a little bit of ingenuity there. And uh, everything's so lot. I don't have to touch anything or hold anything. One hand. And the guitar will move if you knock it like so, but you have to really give it some, but that's great, really, really works. But anyway, here we are, just finishing off these, these polishing. There is a tiny little divot there, but if I start, if I remove that divot, I'm going to, to lower all of the frets down to that depth. So we're going to leave that in there, it's the tiniest, tiniest one. So all in all, a complete fret level on this guitar, it's really, really going to work wonders for how it plays. It's going to give a lot more play as well a lot more life in that now so that is the polishing done I do have a brush somewhere here we go I'm just going to clean up the fingerboard and now what I can do is get the guitar set up it's all ready um, I'm just going to remove it from the clamps and uh, very easy just I'm going to glue a nut back on as well here very good and we are all good to go so I'm going to glue a nut back on while it's there and then we're going to get over back over to the bench peel off all the tape clean up the fingerboard get some strings on and get the guitar ready to go there are quite a lot of things I don't show or mention when I'm working on a guitar and I thought I'd show you what they are for instance I've just sprayed the fingerboard with lemon oil it's not lemon oil, it's basically mineral oil with a hint of lemon in there to make it smell nice. It's proper formulated for rosewood and wood guitar necks. So I don't think this is lemon oil at all because lemon oil would strip your wood completely and really knacker it. But anyway, what we do is we let this soak in 15, 20, especially on a dirty fingerboard like this, let it soak in 15, 20 minutes and all the grime on there will start to flow it up. We'll wipe it off and then we give another spray and we let it nourish the wood. But sometimes what I do is, if, in particular this guitar, I kept saying to my wife, I keep smelling cigarettes. And I don't smoke, I've not smoked for six years. I smoked for 35 years, but I stopped smoking six years ago, seven years ago even. Well, no, six years. But anyway, that aside, and I thought it must be this guitar. So I thought, 
Yeah, it is his guitar. I can smell the tobacco. It's because it's obviously played in bars and places like that. Or places where there's been cigarettes over the years. But anyway, that aside, so what I normally do is, especially for instance, like with the body also being a little bit grimy in that, I will just give an extra spray of lemon oil there and I'll rub it over the guitar body and the bridge saddle and just over the guitar body just to remove. You can use it as a cleaning product and just, I'm just gonna, there you go, get into these areas where dust has built up over the years and grime and it's gonna bring this guitar or this body up to a nice, it's actually a really nice satin finish at the moment. It's a little bit of gloss. It is glossed, but nice. And it, but now it's clean and it smells better, you know. So things I don't normally show or I don't normally mention, but I know when Derek gets his guitar back, he's going to think, wow, it looks amazing. And it, the thing is, it is going to look amazing. I'll do the same with the headstock as well, because the headstock's got grime all over it. Now I'll use, I won't spread any more, put any more oil on there, but what I'll do is I'll use the same cloth, which has got some oil residue on it, just enough to clean everything. And if there's not enough, I need to remove a bit more. I'll put a bit more oil on there, or some cleaning product, whatever. I will do. But this guitar is now going to look fantastic. I'm not going to alter this because someone stuck him a silver star on there, obviously because he's been teaching at school. And it's got the remnants of that, and I'm not going to remove that. I'm going to leave that there. Leave all the mojo on it. But anyway, another 10 minutes, let that soak in. And um, we'll come and wipe it off, and we'll get some strings on. Get it set up. This guitar is going to be a beauty once it's all back to how it should be. Derek is going to love it. He's going to get many, many more years out of these frets. And here we are, fret friends, all done. And what a big hulk of a guitar this is. I don't know what size it's supposed to be. It's definitely a super drummer. It's bigger than a dreadnought, or it appears bigger than a dreadnought. Maybe it has something to do with the shape. I don't know. But look at the size of the thing. It's massive. I think acoustic basses have got bodies as big as that, but it's all done. There you go. And the main work we've done on this, we've done two things mainly. We have done um, we've done a complete fret level recrown and polish, and we've sorted out the electrics. We've put on a set of DR Dragon Skin acoustic strings, super light gauge. Is it super light gauge? Not sure. These are the ones I use myself. Dragon Skin, DR Dragon Skin, uh, handmade strings, 1048 gauge, extra light. Phosphor bronze, hard coating for brightness and volume. I love these strings. And I love light strings on a guitar. They're light gauge. Did I say? No, it just says 1048s. Uh, I'd imagine these are pretty extra light, maybe. I don't know. But great, great strings. I buy these in sets of two. Comes in two packs. Look, two sets inside. About 14 quid delivered. Beautiful. First set of these I ever used were my Yamaha. They lasted me 14 months. I didn't even need to take them off when I did. But I did because I tried something else. But anyway, there you go. Guitar is done. A little bit of uh, extra glue I need to scrape off that side of the nut there. Oh, it's nice. Just a bit of muck. That's good. So everything is all back. Guitar looks as good as it's ever going to look again. The electrics are all in and done. Um, so let me just turn on the battery. You can see there. Everything's now all working. Not plugged it in yet. Um, I played it unplugged. He sounds as well as an electroacoustic is going to sound on plug. So there you go. This is the first project with me now as a self-employed guitar tech. It is now my full-time job. I don't have time for anything else, so uh, maybe in the future I'm going to make slightly less videos because I need to be earning more money, obviously. Uh, but uh, first one out of the way. So I'm your friend, Victor. I'm your fret friend, above all. And until uh, next time, boys and girls, God bless you. Be good to each other, and I'll talk to you soon.